Its neighbor to the east is Bethlehem, and like Allentown, this city has maintained a complementary blend of old and artistic architecture with functional and modern structure. This area is known as the Lehigh Valley. Mack trucks, air products and chemical, and numerous other industries are headquartered here. But perhaps the best known industry of the Lehigh Valley is the steel industry. And while the steel business has fallen on hard times, Allentowners have not. Instead of focusing on the crumbling decay of Bethlehem Steel, the attention here is on the positive. On a clear day, you can see the Pocono Mountains. A drive to New York is less than two hours. Philadelphia, even closer. But if the weather isn't cooperating, attention is usually directed towards Lehigh University's Stabler Arena, a facility built in 1979 that accommodates all kinds of events, from graduations to rock concerts, from tractor pulls to auto shows. Today, it is an international haven for Olympic hopefuls and the explosive sport of artistic gymnastics. When Allentowners look inside Stabler Arena tonight, they'll see Phoebe Mills, winner of the 88 McDonald's American Cup. Mills is coached by Bella Caroli, who has produced such greats as Nadia Komenich and Mary Lou Retton. Phoebe Mills, America's Olympic hopeful. On the men's side, it will be Scott Johnson wowing the crowd. This 1984 Olympic gold medalist is focusing on the 88 games. At the Pan Am Games last year, he was first all around. And 23-year-old Dan Hayden will be muscling his way into the Seoul Olympics. Hayden has overcome severe injuries and is performing with a vengeance. At the 87 World Championships in Rotterdam, Hayden was the top American performer. The road to Seoul is paved with competition, and tonight it's in Stabler Arena. ESPN and the United States Gymnastics Federation present International Gymnastics. From the Stabler Arena in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, it's the McDonald's International Mixed Pairs. This event is brought to you by McDonald's. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Stabler Arena, where we have a capacity crowd on hand to watch this Mixed Pairs event. I'm Leandra Riley, and what we have in store for you is something unique in gymnastics. Instead of men and women competing in spite of each other, they will have to compete with each other. The gymnasts have been paired off. There are 19 pairs. The combined men's and women's score of each pair will advance them to the second round. But we'll elaborate more on the scoring later on. Right now, let me introduce you to one of our two expert analysts. She's a 1984 Olympian. In fact, you won a medal there, but you also competed in the mixed pairs competition. But actually, I'm going to pull on your expertise in the international realm. Just 48 hours ago, you were at the American Cup. How did the gymnasts look from the international world, specifically Romanians, Russians, East Germans, etc.? Who's the best? Well, Leandra, two teams expected to be top competition here are not surprisingly the Soviets and the Romanians. For the Romanians, we have Marius Toba, who just won the American Cup two days ago, and his partner, Gabriela Podorak, was an excellent gymnast. She was the alternate for the World Championship gold medal winning team in Rotterdam. And the Soviets, in typical fashion, are superb. And if they're consistent tonight, they could possibly be the ones to contend with. Both Svetlana Baitova and Igor Korobchinsky were second at the American Cup and are potentially flawless. So I'm sure they're looking to win this competition. That's true, potentially flawless, but they did have some mistakes at the American Cup, so they're not a shoe in for this mixed pairs gold medal. No, they're not a shoe in but I have a feeling they won't have as many mistakes. All right, now let's talk about the American side. And for that, I'm going to bring in our other expert analyst, a gold medalist from the 84 Games, and you too are a former mixed pairs competitor, Peter Vidmar. And Peter, of the Americans, who are the strongest that we should watch for? Well, we have six pairs, but only two can move into the next round, and only one can move into the final round. So we kind of have a competition within a competition for the Americans. That's kind of tough. Phoebe Mills is coming off her spectacular American Cup victory, and she's paired up with Kevin Davis. They'll be a tough team to beat. Now, last year, Phoebe won this event with her teammate, Scott Johnson. But this year, Scott's teamed up with Brandy Johnson. No relation. Brandy's very powerful. And she's starting out on one of her best events, the vault. And so they could move into round two as well. Another team that has a very strong chance is Dan Hayden and newcomer Shelly Stack. Dan is going to start out on the horizontal bar where he does this spectacular release trick, and I'm really looking forward to that to start off the meet. Okay, once again, to reiterate, the defending champions are here, but they actually are split up. We might have co-champions this year. Who knows what will happen in mixed pairs competition? Stay tuned to find out. Mixed pairs. Briefly, let me explain how this competition will work. For one day, for one meet, we have married the gymnasts. The male gymnast from Romania, his score will be combined with the female gymnast from Romania, and the same will hold true for the Soviet Union, the United States, etc. Their combined scores will advance them to the second round. 
There are 19 pairs in the first round. Only eight will make it to the second round, and only three will make it to the final round. The gymnasts are allowed to choose which apparatus they would like to compete on. So you may see all ten events, then again, you might not. For women, if they elect two vault, they must do so in the first round. And competing first for us will be the combination from Romania, Gabriela Potera and Marios Toba. The women will perform first, and Gabriela Potera has elected to vault. Now, during this competition, you're going to see what has typically not been a normal vault. It's called a Yurchenko, and it's a round-off vault onto the board, and then go backwards onto the horse like a giant back handspring. The girls have become very consistent on this vault and are doing amazing things on the afterplay. Gabriela Potorok is from Bacau, Romania. She is 5 feet, 1 half inches tall, 15 years of age, and weighs just 70 pounds. Round-off approach. Nice ball. So your chinko layout full twist. And she has a little bit of pike in the somersault, which is definitely a deduction. Small step on the landing. We will go with her second ball. Octavian Belu is her coach, the man who is escorting her back to the area where she begins her runway. Potorak, being a female gymnast, is allowed to do two vaults. In men's vaulting competition, they do only one vault. I can see by the numbers she's posted, she'll be doing the same vault, which is allowed in this competition. And in others, it is not. They must do a different family of vaults. In event finals, they have to do two different vaults. Now, again, in this event, we should elaborate also that it is the better score that counts. So you actually get two chances in this particular apparatus. But I think that is only appropriate because it happened so quickly. <laughs> the men never thought it was fair. They have to do one vault and one vault counts. Right. I never thought it was fair. <laughs> <laughs> That's the voice of Peter Vidmar protesting. <laughs> Our Romanian gymnast who competed at the Goodwill Games in 1986, Potorok finished fourth and in the all-around event. Ball, Capacity Potorok. here at the Stabler Arena is over 4,000 and we have exceeded that tonight. They love their gymnastics, and I think the Park Hits Club is a big reason why they're right here in Allentown. Gabriela Potorak, second vault. Actually, a much better vault. She noticed she lands a little close into the horse. That, that's also a deduction. Now you can see how well you have to judge the distance here. To get right back on the horse, Lift off, that's the layout with full twist and a much better landing this time. So Gabriela Potorak has completed her vaulting competition and that is her partner from Romania, Mario Toba, on the still rings. Toba is the American Cup all-around champion. He kind of really broke the dominance by American gymnasts and Soviet gymnasts. And so this is a real first for Romania, a strong male gymnast. Touch up front. That's called a Yamawaki. Done by a gymnast named Yamawaki back in 1984 at the Olympic Games. Iron cross. A little short. He should have held that a little bit longer. Press the handstand. Now he's going to set up for his dismount. Giant. Double layout. Very good landing. That's a very common dismount. Most of the gymnasts on ring dismount with double layout because they get that superior difficulty, but it really isn't the most difficult dismount. Mario Toba, 20 years of age, 121 pounds. Now this is the dismount. It's called a double layout. It's a double back flip with your body straight. Very good. He lands it very well, and it's really not as difficult as some of the other dismounts. And again, his score will be combined with Gabriela Potorak. This is the better of her two vaults. Again, the round off onto the board. Excellent push off the horse. A little short on distance, but a good landing. And that good landing was worth a score of 9.725. But that is only half the story as we look now at little Brandy Johnson. She is waiting to vault. She is part of our second pair as Jan Clare, our public address announcer, likes to call them. The Band-Aid twins, Johnson and Johnson. You were part of that when you competed with Scott no, Johnson. Wait, I was the original <laughs> Band-Aid twins. I guess you lost your glue. You didn't stick around, yeah. and 
Now it's little Brandy Johnson trying to fill your shoes. Again, we are waiting for Mario Toba's score for the Still Rings event to be added to the 9.725 that Gabriela Potorak received. And he received a 9.80. His total, 19.525. 19.525. That is the score for Romania. Remember, 20 would be perfect. So a slight smile on the face of Potorak. But again, we'll have to see how the rest of the competition fares. It's sometimes a tough draw to be the first one of an event. And there may be more official scores coming up a bit later. Again, we will return to the vaulting where Brandy Johnson has also elected to compete in the vaulting event. Brandy Johnson now competes for bronze gymnastics. She is 14 years of age, is 4 feet 11 inches tall, originally from Altamont Springs, Florida. Brandy's chosen to do the same vault that Gabriella did. It will be a good comparison. Watch the difference in distance from the horse. Nice position. It's much more distance from the horse. It's just more a more dynamic vault. Runs in good control. Great lift off the horse. And as you can see, a straighter body position. Now, her vault seems much higher to me. It was much higher and much farther from the horse. Overall, it was just a bigger vault. Oh, uh, the step back. Will that penalize her a lot? Obviously, that's something she doesn't want to do on this vault. At the 1987 Shinichi Cup, Brandy finished 12th in the all-around. At the McDonald's Championships of the USA, she was first all-around in the junior division. So she's just recently moving up to the senior division. Looking for a good landing here. Oh, just about had a little stumble step right there. Now I'm going to have you focus on her hand placement on the horse. To me, it looked maybe a little short, but you tell me you're the expert. One thing about the way Brandy does is vault. She has more room for error. It's not really short. Maybe a tad, tad short on the, on the front end of the horse. But the main deduction was the step. So you would categorize the first vault as being the better vault? I, about tit for tat, actually. All right, now we're looking at the other half of Johnson & Johnson. This is Scott Johnson, 1984 Olympic gold medalist. And he stuck around, Peter Vidmar. You yeah. retired to the broadcast booth. Yeah, he sure did, and, and he's got reason to. Look at his gymnastics performance here in the rings. I think if Scott uh, had to pick one event that he had to do in gymnastics, if he only had one event to do, he'd pick this event, the rings. He's so powerful. Look at that. That kick right to a Maltese cross, into an iron cross. Hip to an L. I'm really impressed with the second half of Scott's routine. He's so powerful at the end. Most of us are kind of sucking up wind and we're trying to get enough energy to finish off that routine at the end. And Scott seems to have just as much power at the very end as he does at the beginning. There's a giant swing. Giant right to a handstand. Now he got a little bit off there. He overshot the giant. He did like one extra swing. And that can be a deduction. Back up rise to a handstand. Here's his dismount. Pike half an F out. Took a step at the end. That's a deduction as well. Probably won't be as high a score as Tobas. Very proud of Scott. Scott Johnson took the first in the rings event at the Pan Am Games, so you're right, it is one of his strongest. Now here's G Scott's giant swing. He does a giant, giant, two giants in a row. Tries to stop, but he overshoots it a little bit, so playing it smart. He just goes into another giant. It's a good cover-up, but it's still a deduction. Here's his dismount. It's a pike half and half out, a full twisting double back flip in the pike position. Over rotates just a little bit and takes a big step to the back. Scott Johnson awaiting his score. Brandy's score for the vaulting was 9.725. Getting a congratulatory hug from Scott Johnson. And now the pressure's on Scott. What will his score be? Brandy Johnson achieved the same score as her Romanian competitor. And the Johnson and Johnson team wind up with a total of 19.425. They are one-tenth behind the Romanians.
But first, these messages. Itova is our next competitor. A 15-year-old from the Soviet Union competing first on the vault. Again, repeating the restrictions. If women wish to vault, they must vault in the first round. <laughs> Kathy Johnson? She does it so easily, it's unexpected. The landing was a little bit off. But I can't tell you how difficult this vault is. The amazing part is she keeps perfect form. Legs completely together. And a total laid out position. One, two. Just a tiny bit off center and a tiny bit short on the rotation. She likes movies, music, and art. What is her strength, Kathy? Is it upper body power? Is it leg power? How come she can do so much before she hits the ground? I would have to say it's timing. Timing and positioning. And that was the first attempt by Svetlana Bayitova. She is from Moldov in the Soviet Union. And she is waiting now for the green flag to do her second ball. We've just been told that the score for the first ball is 9.8. A very, fair score. Very good score for that ball. If she improves now on the landing, we're going to see a big score. <laughs> All right. Well, she stuck that one. <laughs> Definitely a better ball. I'm amazed at the consistent she has, consistency she has with this ball. Now, if you're familiar with vault, you can see the run is a little bit slower than the traditional approach. Good lift up off the horse, and as I said, a perfect tight twist. Her partner is Igor Korobchinsky. He is on the pommel horse. Korobchinsky is obviously one of the great Soviet gymnasts, and he's only 18 years old. I'm just amazed at how they keep popping out these great stars every time. Beautiful flare work right to a handstand. He worked right across the horse earlier. Drops down to a scissor sequence. Back up to a handstand. Little bang on the horse if it's a little bit of a deduction. And there's a dismount of flare. Right up to a handstand, walk across the horse. And he looks good. He's five, six and a half, and being a little longer always looks nice when you swing your legs in the pommel horse. It's, you're right. It's beautiful in pommel horse to see a long, thin gymnast because he's also got the flexibility. And when he when he splits those legs on a flare, it really looks spectacular. Now he had a little bit of a bobble in the middle of his routine. He drops down to a scissor sequence. Then does a scissor right up to a handstand. Then he cuts his leg right back down. And here's where he bangs the horse. You see his legs bending there. That's a bit of a deduction. But the routine was such a good routine in terms of difficulty that he still should get a fairly good score. Here's his dismount of flare right up to a handstand. Walking across the horse. Only 18 years old. He's got a good career ahead of him. His partner, Svetlana Bayutova, received a 9.90 for her ball. The second ball, obviously, Kathy, was the better ball. She received a 9.8 for the first. So the 9.9 is the one that will be used. It will be combined with the pommel horse score that we are waiting for, for Igor Korobchinsky. This is the pair from the Soviet Union. You see the judges making the final calculations. 9.7, giving them a total of 19.60, and they are now our leaders with Romania pulling in second and Johnson coming in third. From the Soviet Union back to the United States, our next pair consists of Shelly Stack and Dan Hayden. Shelly Stack is one of Caroli's kids, competes down in Houston, Texas, although she is originally from Endicott, New York. She is 14 years of age, and she is one of the smaller gymnasts here at 4 feet 7 inches tall. She's also doing the Yurchenko layout pull. A very good ball. A little short on the landing. Had to take a small hop. But this ball is perfect. For, as you said, she's a very small gymnast. It's hard for someone that's 4 feet 7, 72 pounds, to generate a lot of speed and power. So with a round-off ball, with the, the right timing and the right approach, One of our favorite let's talk about her landing. Caroli teaches a unique form of landing in that he spreads the legs apart on the landing. I think we'll, we'll see it here. Well, it's a very deliberate landing. Feet apart. Right. Personally, I, I like a, a landing that's quicker, crisper, and with the feet together. 
and I believe it's a deduction this way. She has good position in the air. Is it a bigger deduction to have your feet apart or to take a step? <laughs> it's really, there is a set deduction for taking a step. There is no set deduction for landing with feet apart. It's a judgment call. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you can get your legs too far apart, and then it is a definite deduction. Or a split. Now, gymnastics fans need to get used to seeing this ball. It's called a Yurchenko. It's the round-off entry ball. Definitely the trend. Good approach. A much better ball. See, the problem when you land with your feet that far apart, if you do stick and stand up immediately, you're stuck standing with your feet apart. And now a young gentleman who recently moved to Woodward Gymnastics Camp in Woodward, Pennsylvania. It's where just about as good as she can do this ball. Look at that. Time. Perfect. Right on the horse. Good lift. <laughs> Watch the landing. Wow. Doesn't move at all. Give her the Elmer's Glue Award. <laughs> Shelly Stack from Carolis. She is married for this meet to Dan Hayden, 23-year-old from Buffalo, New York, originally, now competes for Woodward's gymnastics camp. I don't know if Dan appreciated that. Actually, Dan is married, so <laughs> we, we better correct well, that for his, the record. No. His, his wife understands. Yeah, of course. Uh, now, here comes this great trick that Dan does on the horizontal bar. It's called a Kovacs, named after the Hungarian gymnast that did it first. Here's a stalder. Watch this windup. Look at the bar shape there. There it is, up over the bar, and he catches it. Now, he did that into a kip. Usually, he does that into a complete giant swing, because, but because he was so close to the bar, he had to just do a kip. That's not really a deduction, though. There's his stalder, pirouette stalder, setting up now for his dismount. The same type of technique. It goes up and over the bar. Oh, Pike. Wow. Go twist and go back over the bar. What a routine. Now, because he had that little swing there, though, the judges might know that. Technically, you can't really deduct, but when they see something and they don't expect that to happen, wow. they might take the deduction. They're used to seeing him do a giant swing out of it. Here's the Kovacs, back up and over the bar. He's a little bit close, though. See, his arms are bent, mm -hmm. and he can't generate swing to go over the bar. So he does a kip. Now, Hayden's coming off a crushed vertebrae, broken legs, back fractures. This poor guy has been in the hospital more than he's been in the gym. Yeah, he's done amazing things in being able to come back. In fact, uh, the one field that he wants to get into when he's done with gymnastics, if you can guess, sports, sports medicine. medicine. <laughs> 9.825. 9.825. That's the score for Stack. 9.80. 9.80. So their total is 19.625. They are ahead of the Soviet Union. Stack and Hayden are now in first, but there's still more after this. She is from the Federal Republic of Germany. So the United States enjoying first place and fourth place. This is significant because only two members from the United States can advance to the next round, even though there are four and five pairs from the United States competing. And right now we're about to see Phoebe Mills and Kevin Davis compete. Mills is about to vault. The significance here is she wants to beat that 19.475 total. So we figure, Peter and Kathy, that they have to get a 9.8 and a 9.7. Doesn't matter which one gets which, but they need a total of 19.5 approximately to get into the second round. Only two pairs may advance, and already we have two in the top five. Phoebe Mills, 15 years of age. She is coached by Bella Caroli. And growing has agreed with this young lady. Traditionally, we say with a young female gymnast, uh-oh, she's maturing. There goes her career. But with this young lady, the strength becomes her. She's staying very lean as she grows up. So what's, what's important here is her strength to weight ratio is very good. This ball is also a good ball for Phoebe. She's doing the Yurchenko layout full twist. She's had great success with this ball. Just 48 hours ago, Phoebe Mills won the American Cup, and Bella Caroli has now coached seven of the past winners of the Cup since its inception. I think back in 1976, he's coached Nadia Komenich, Mary Lou Retton, Christy Phillips, and now Phoebe Mills won the American Cup. Christy Phillips is not in this meet. Christy Phillips won the American Cup last year. She is now training for the Olympics. <laughs> Very well done. Again, she's hoping to stick her next ball. She stuck every single one in warm-up, so I know she's hoping she's still got one left in her. Got this ball down pat. 
the position is perfect. Onto the horse. Good lift. Is it a 9-8 or a 9-7? I Probably 9-7-5. <laughs> Peter Vidmar, I want to bring you in here quickly because you were coached at one point by Bella Caroli <laughs> at this very meet. Yeah, I was. I was coached. Uh, it was kind of an informal coaching job. Again. <laughs> Perfect vault. <laughs> you can't get much better than that. A little more distance, but... Well, Bella was coaching me at this competition. I'll tell you, uh, my coach went home. I thought I could take this meet a little bit lightly and relax, and I asked Bella if he could just help me out during the meet, and he assumed the role of a coach. I mean, he was telling me exactly what to do, telling me how to help my dismount. I asked him if I should change things, and he said, no, no, don't change that. Do the easier one. You've got to hit this routine. It was a lot of pressure, but it was a lot of fun. He said, I want the gold. Did he hug you and pat you after your performance? Exactly the same. You think I was one of his girls. All right, this is Kevin Davis. He finished third at the American Cup, and Phoebe Mills has taken the pressure off of this young man because she received a 9.9 .9 for her second vault. And Kevin's doing a great job here. He's doing some very difficult skills. He just had a one-arm reverse hecked. All he needs is a 9.6. And at the rate he's going, he could very easily get it. There's his invert giants hop here right now. All he needs to do is a dismount, and he's into the next round. Double layout. Little hot, that should be good enough. So the team of Spivey Lights might be bumped from the second round by virtue of those two performances. Kevin Davis, the heartthrob of the USA gymnastics team. I say that because all of the young female gymnasts wanted the opportunity to compete with them in this mixed pairs, and Phoebe <laughs> got the got the call. <laughs> Kevin's really come into his own, especially the last few months. He won our winter national competition and was re-ranked as our top gymnast out of that. Here's his invert giants. This is his hot pirouette. Now we wait to score. Kevin did very, very well in this routine. It should score uh, high enough to get both uh, competitors into that next round. Remember, she's 9-9 nine, nine already. All he needs is a 9-6 to bump the other American pair of Hope Spivey and Charles Lakes. They had a 19.475 total, and their total now, I'm told, is 19.6. He received a 9.7. Her 9.9 makes them 19.6, so they're easily into the second round. In fact, they go into the second round in second place. So a fine showing by this duet. We will have two Americans in the second round. We'll recap all the standings and who qualifies. But first, these messages from our sponsors. Well, in the first round, taking not only first and second place, but many other places besides that. Right now, you are looking at the top four, the United States team of Stack and Hayden, Davis and Mills, finishing 1-2. The Soviet Union and Romania coming in third and fourth. Now, places five through eight show another USA pair of Spivey and Lakes, and yes, technically they did finish fifth, but they are precluded from competing in the next round due to the rules of the competition, which state only two teams from one country may advance to the second round. So Spivey and Lakes, congratulations on finishing fifth, but now you've got to get out of here because Germany, the USA team of Johnson and Johnson finishing seventh, they too have to exit the stadium as it were. They are not allowed to advance. Only two may advance. Bulgaria advances to the next round, finishing in eighth position. Now, the standings show 9, 10, and 12, but don't be confused by that with the two USA teams being eliminated, the two that finished later in the standings. We will have only eight teams in the finals. Right now, there is a young man that we want you to take a look at. In the floor exercise competition at the Olympic Games in Los Angeles, he took the gold medal. And here at the mixed pairs, he had an outstanding performance, receiving a 9.8. Now, Leaning's doing his mount as a full twist and double back flip. He can actually do this with one, with one more twist, and it's very easy for him. But look how he just kicks out, just opens up. I'll tell you, the only thing that prevents him sometimes from going higher, we think, is the rafters. He's so powerful on floor. A fine performance by Li Ling. The seating has already taken place. China will go first. After this commercial break, we'll have round number two. Round two, I'm Leander Riley, along with Kathy Johnson and Peter Vidmar for our second round of competition in the McDonald's International Mixed Pairs here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Floor exercise is the event chosen by Yu Feng. She will be teamed with Li Ning. 
Their combined total going into this round is 19.375. They finished in seventh place after one rotation. Now you are looking at Yu Feng. She is 18 years of age, weighs just 93 pounds. The Chinese have really changed their philosophy. Um, many years ago, they were more into flexibility, the artistic side. They've become much more powerful, put a lot of emphasis on tumbling, vaulting, and all the strength moves. Interesting choice of music. Front somersault through to a double tuck. Good job. Nice strong start. Second pass. Another double tuck somersault. Set a very unique choice of music. Not particularly great choreography. Tumbling has been fair. The last tumbling pass. Very weak last tumbling pass. Okay, just a very a, a fair routine. Not a lot of difficulty there. But in a competition such as this. That might get you into the third round. I don't know. It's going to be tough. Now, we're going to take a look at the last tumbling pass. She opted to do a much easier dismount. It's a front somersault through to a single somersault with a full twist. Not difficult at all. And this is Li Ning, ready to compete on the still rings. And Lini is going to have to pick up a little bit of, uh, of slack here because <laughs> that may not be a very good score, but he is extremely powerful on the rings. Leaning is the 1984 Olympic champion on the rings, so we should see a good performance here. And you can certainly tell by the size of his arms. That's the source of great jealousy, I think, for me. <laughs> I was never really a very big muscular gymnast when I was competing. Rings was a good event for me. I, I was fourth in the games on rings, but... But I look at these guys, and the Chinese gymnasts are just so big and muscular. And it's just amazing. Ready to compete. So, ladies and gentlemen, that still rings. Lee Ning. Capacity crowd here at Stabler Arena. A sold-out competition. In part due by the popularity of gymnastics in the town of Allentown. Parquet, a very popular club in the United States gymnastics world, is based right here. His first trick, kip to a plange, into a trick that he originated. I guess we can call that the ning, or the leaning. <laughs> They're trying to get away from naming skills after gymnasts. A plange press to a handstand. Inverted cross, back up rise handstand. Giant handstand. And his dismount is a double layout, very, very high. Took a hop, though. That's a deduction. It doesn't matter how high it is. If you take a hop, you're going to take some points off. Li Ning, the man who won this competition back in 1985, trying to make a comeback in 1988. You know, I'm a little disappointed with the way dismounts have gone on rings because uh, Li Ning used to be able to do a triple back flip. He could do a double twist, double back flip. Very difficult dismounts. But they changed the rules a little bit, and they gave very high difficulty credit for a dismount like a double layout, which simply isn't that hard. And so now every gymnast dismounts with a double layout. And I think it's really taken away from the difficulty level of rings. And now it is back to the United States, the team that finished first after one rotation, although the scores from the first round will carry over into the second round. Right now, these are the people that are on top, Shelly Stack and Dan Hayden.
Shelly Stack works out at Caroli's. Bella Caroli is her coach. She has been in the sport for eight years. She is from Endicott, New York. Currently lives in Houston, had to leave home to train in the sport. There you see the totals now for this round, 19.5. Lee Ning getting a 9-9. The only flaw was the landing. He could have got a 10 if he had stuck it cold, but he took that hop, and that's about a 10th off. USA pair on balance beam, Shelly Stack. Now, it's really unusual for a gymnast to choose balance beam in a competition where she does have her choice. Shelly's very confident on this event. It's a nice reverse plunge. Can't spring. Chest roll down. Probably one of the most impressive parts of her competition at the American Cup was immediately following a fall on the uneven bar. She came back on balance beam and on the floor exercise and just did a great job. Many kids in that situation could not come back and perform like that. Something we, a should very crucial stress. Part. we should stress this a, a mixed pairs event. Two back handsprings, lay out, step out, slight bend at the knees, which will cost you. This event is not all fun. I mean, we we make light of it in the fact that the two scores are combined, and in, certainly in terms of international rankings, it really means nothing. But these are international judges, and impressions are made. So the gymnasts must really perform their heart out it's because they don't want to jeopardize the opinion that the judge might have of them. It's always important whenever you're performing in front of a huge crowd or in front of these judges that you do a good job. You know, the funny part about this competition, we all begin it very relaxed, but once you get into it, this is serious competition. Here's your dismount. She's done quite well so far. Going for a stick, round off, double back dismount. Fairly large step there at the end, but she should be very happy with that routine. Bella Caroli seems pleased. She seems pleased. I think the main improvement she can make in her balance beam work is to really learn to straighten her legs completely. As you can see, they're slightly bent here on the back handspring and, and significantly bent on the layout step out. And Dan Hayden, her partner, is on the parallel bars. Just mounted. Dan had a little problem on that. Now he's crooked. Oh, he hit his legs in the bar. That's a major deduction. That should knock them out. I would say that normally parallel bars is, is technically Dan's best event. But he had that big mistake. You know, once you get off on a routine, it's so hard to get your composure back when you've got a big trip coming up right next. After that, there's a V, planche press to a handstand. And a stutz. Good clean line. Back toss. Another back toss. Another stutz. And double back this one. And that's going to be a major deduction. Well, he rallied at the end, but in the beginning it was difficulty and, and tough break for Stack and Hayden. In a meet like this, you don't get a second chance. Right. You can't, you can't recoup. Yeah. That's right. Here's his dismount. It's a double back flip. And again, his score will be combined with the score that Shelly Stack received. Shelly receiving a 9.60 for her beam performance. So now we are waiting for the totals. The score that they would like to beat is 38.875. That is what the team from China has accumulated after two rotations. Well, it looks like they're still happy with each other. She's not hitting him. <laughs> No, this, this is a fun thing. meet. Yes. <laughs> it is a fun meet, and they both did quite well at the American Cup. I'm sure they're pleased with their work. And it's important to finish strongly, especially in an Olympic year. Van Hayden showing some of his maturity and composure at this level of competition. It's a savvy crowd here in Allentown, Pennsylvania. I've mentioned many times that Parquette is based here. They are a very top-notch gymnastics club here in Allentown. 9-3 for Dan Hayden, so that'll give them a total of 19, or 18.9 rather. So 18.9 won't be good enough to, I don't think, to get them into the next round. But who knows? Everybody else might flub up. It's not over until it's over. We'll be back with more of the second round.
International mixed pairs. We are ready now for the two teams that tied for second, the Soviet Union and the United States. First, we are going to see the pair from the Soviet Union. Svetlana Bayatova will be our first competitor on the uneven parallel bars. I was wondering what she was going to do. She's changed her mount from the warm-up. She was having trouble with it. That is actually a part that is usually in the middle part of her routine. Did she water it down? Not really watered it down. She took out the mount, and that's all. She's going to do everything else. Beautiful flyaway hat. I believe she's taken out her reverse hex. So, yes, she has watered down. Free up to handstand. Giant. Oh, half in, half out. But she jazzed up the dismount. It's a very difficult dismount. And this was a young lady who fell off at the American Cup on the uneven parallel bars and decided, I guess, to play it safe. She, I think she made the wise choice. It was on the mount, but she fell at the American Cup. It cost her the all-around. Stalled her to handstand. That beautiful release move. It's way up in the air. This is her partner now, Igor Korobchinsky. He is on the still rings. Now, notice that most of the gymnasts in this competition, the male gymnasts, they like to do rings. It's just one of those events that once you get your hands locked in the rings, you know you don't have to let go till the very end. It's a very secure event for most of us. Now, he's only 18 years old. Corp Chinchi has got a lot of growing to do. He's going to be a lot stronger in the future. His swing is very, very good. He's a little unstable in his handstands, a little weak in some of his strength parts. But he's technically very, very sound on the screen. What a beautiful double layout this one. He's 18 years of age. At what point does a male gymnast, do you think, reach his peak? At, w at what age? You know, it just depends. It, it absolutely depends on the individual, what sort of growth spurts they grow through. Uh, I would say the average age might be in the lower mid-20s, and that's where you might see them reaching their peak. But a lot of the best Soviets are, are very, very young. That's a beautiful double layout. And that was Korobchinsky by Itoba on the uneven parallel bars. What's really amazing about this routine is that she was able to change it at the last minute and still come through with a solid performance. Well, the score for the Soviet Union on the uneven parallel bars was 9.9. .9. We are still waiting for their still rings figure, but that certainly puts the pressure on Phoebe Mills, who was also elected to compete on the uneven parallel bars. Now, coming into this round, B.B. Mills and her partner, Kevin Davis, from the USA, were tied with the pair from the Soviet Union. And the young lady from the Soviet Union just received a 9.90. We're looking now at Bella Caroli, the coach of B.B. Mills. One more note that we should add is Christy Phillips is no longer coached by Bella Caroli. She has now moved out to the SCATS program and is coached by Olympic coach Don Peters. So Bella Caroli is focusing all of his attention now on B.B. Mills, and that attention is paying off. B.B. Mills just won the American Cup, the all-around title. And she's doing quite well in this event. As Kathy? you said, Leandra, she, she did win the American Cup, and she did it with near-perfect routines on this all four events. This is the year to be hot. 19.60 is the total for this team from the Soviet Union. This is Phoebe's favorite event. I think you'll be able to see why. She does it quite easily. She's got two release moves. There's her first reverse hect. She casts right up to handstand. Now watch how she catches with mixed grip. Back somersault down to the low bar. Not only are her big skills good, but even the connection moves are very unique. Giant full pirouette right into a double tuck flyer. Is it a 9-9? Nine, nine? That is the question. I think I would give it a 9-9. Nine, nine. We'll see what the judges do. But I think it's very comparable to the Soviet gymnast routine. In fact, it was cleaner. Not, not any breaks in this routine. Except right here, slight little hop, and that's all. Phoebe Mills very happily with her performance as we move now to the parallel bars for her partner's performance, Kevin Davis. 
Kevin's kind of like uh, one of the backbone gymnasts of the real powerful University of Nebraska team. They've always done very, very well in collegiate competition, and they continue to put some top gymnasts up on our national team. Kevin originally hails from Lithonia, Georgia. He does a press up to a handstand to the center of the bars. A Diamidoff, front up rise. Little break on the handstand. That's called a Healy twirl. And another Healy twirl. He does those very well. Back up rise, straddle cut. This is a very solid routine. Double back this mount. Little hop. Should get a very good score on that. Nine point seven five. Would you say it's worth at least that? Uh oh. Or very we're gonna, close. We're going to have to wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have my judging card yet, so uh, no. There it is. Double back dismount. Little hop. I think it's comparable to the Soviets ring routine. He had a good score at the American Cup. Scored a nine point eight on that routine. Again, they came into this round tied for second with the Soviet Union. The Soviet gymnast, the female, received a 9.9 for uneven parallel bars. Phoebe Mills received a 9.875. So they're .025 off just on the women's side of the competition. But let's see if Kevin Davis made up the slack. Their combined total should be 19.6 as they just keep pace with the Soviet Union. And his score, 19.675. So right now, they have overtaken second place. We'll be back with more second-round competitors after these messages. Standings with two pairs yet to compete. The United States is on top with Davis and Mills, 39.275, but hot on their heels, the Soviet Union, 39.2. Needless to say, this meet isn't over. This third round is going to mean a lot. Only the top three pairs will advance, and right now, in the third slot, is a German Democratic Republic. Right now, let's take a look at Romania's Gabriela Potorak. Good handstand positions here. Excellent line. Full pirouette over the top. Another full pirouette. Full and a half to a front. Very nice move. She keeps excellent form throughout the routine. Another full pirouette over the top. Right into a double tuck flyaway and a good landing. Nice, solid routine. The team from Romania was in fourth after the first rotation, and they're trying to break into the top three. This is her dismount. She does a full pirouette over the top. She does this quite well, right into a double tuck flyaway, and a perfect landing. And now on floor, her team. really does a Romanian male outperform the Romanian female. Right. That was a real good stumble, though. Either double back foot to go punch front, and you just totally set down. That would be a major deduction. He might be safe. It just flashes a score for his teammate. She received a 9.9. A little flare work, a little break dancing trick, right? The splits. Very, very flexible. Oh, that is a major deduction, though, on that double back punch front. There's a plan, press to a handstand. Now, he should have held that handstand as well. He should hold it for a minimum of two seconds. He needs a 9.525 to tie for third. In other words, to advance to the final round. Well, he may have a chance, but it just depends on how much the judges choose to deduct on that little mistake he made earlier, or that big mistake. Very powerful, Jimmy. He gets 9.6 or better, they're in. 9.525 or better, actually, they're in. Now, his second pass is a round-off back handspring double back flip, and he tries to do a punch front flip right out of it. But he just doesn't quite get on his toes right. Yeah, just does basically a forward roll. Now, he can maybe cover up a little bit. Let's see his dismount. Front flip walkout, round-off back handspring, layout with a double twist into an immediate punch front. This is what he wanted to do out of that double back.
Now, some judges will rationalize and say, oh, he just did a punch forward roll out of it. Others might say, no, he, we know what he meant to do, and it was a big mistake. So you just don't know where they're going to go on this. She did her part, hitting a 9.90. They were in fourth after the first rotation. The team they want to beat has a combined total of 38.95. That's the German Democratic Republic. <laughs> I don't know. He's patting her on the back. She should be patting him on the back. <laughs> you should be asking him how his ankles feel. <laughs> I think you're right, Peter. That second pass did not look like it felt good. Peter, while we've got this pause here, what happened to the Japanese men? We they used to be so dominant in this sport, and they're not even in this round. Well, I think one of the reasons why they're not in this round or advancing on uh, is is because also the Japanese women don't perform necessarily very well, so that won't help them to move him up into the next round. But the Japanese male gymnasts uh, dominated the sport for 20 years, and really, I don't think they just kept up with the trends that were being set in our sport. Uh, a lot of innovative skills being done, more creativity, and I think they got a little bit stale. Now, I'm not knocking them down. They're great gymnasts. They still consistently perform well in international competition, but uh, right now, they're not in the top three in the world. You heard the score, 9.60. According to our math, that will advance them into the next round. So they will be seen again, the Romanians, getting into the next round, unless the Bulgarians do something awesome. This is Diana Dudova. Diana Dudova is competing, obviously, on the balance beam. She is 5 feet 1 and 1 half inches tall, 19 years of age. She was actually 6th sixth, sixth on this event at the World Championships. And there, her team placed 5th. Now that, I believe, was going to be a, a pass. She's usually done... Two back handsprings into a layout step out. She's going to repeat the skill. Did she really has that? no choice. Back handspring, layout step out. She's got to do it for the difficulty. <laughs> she needs it for the difficulty. That's a darned if you do, darned if you don't. Traditionally in the sport, you are supposed to carry on if you fall on a move, but you need the difficulty of some moves, and if you omit them, then there's a bigger deduction. So that's why she repeated. Now, if she's anywhere near the time limit, also repeating the skill will cause a problem. Standing layout step out. Her country is actually better known for their rhythmic gymnastics as opposed to this event, which is called artistic gymnastics. And when I say rhythmic, I'm talking about the rhythmic batons and, and so forth. The Bulgarians dominate that in the world. Side the ball, she's moving quite solidly. Here comes her dismount. Round off, double pike dismount, laid out the first somersault. Now we'll see where she had her problem. This was a setup move, back handspring, she's way off to the side. There's no way she could even begin to do a layout out of that. Turn sideways, thought it was gonna be a cartwheel. Now here's her dismount. Laid out on the first somersault, pulls it in to a pike, a little low on the landing. Diana Dudova waiting now for her partner, Lubomir Deraskov. And he's working beautifully across the horse. Very, very extended double leg circles. See how free his hips are from the pommels. A very simple break into his scissors. And here comes his flare work. Wow. Flare. Oh, right to a handstand, down to the end, back into flare work. That's a very innovative dismount. Now, he's stuck there. That's a little bit of a deduction, but this is a very innovative dismount sequence. I liked it. That was that impressive. Ending. You know, we said how Japan has dropped in men's competition. Bulgaria has really come, come on strong. They were fourth at the World Championships in, in Rotterdam, and they were within striking distance of a medal. They're really moving up in men's gymnastics. Now, here's this flare. Right down to the end of the horse, full turn, very, very consistent. He's very stable on that flare sequence. That's hard to do that. The women's program has moved up as well, and here's a case in point. This combination after one rotation was in sixth. That means there are two teams worse than they were after one rotation. The door isn't closed yet. Only the top three do get into the final round, but I don't think the scores that they met will be worthy of an advancement. 
975 the score for Diana Dudova. She performed on the balance beam and did have the fall. And now we are waiting for the score for Lubomir Garaskov. And I can hear through our public address announcer Jan Claire that he gets a 9.85. So the Bulgarians will wind up finishing after two rotations. We will bring you up to date as to the top three teams that are advancing. The USA is definitely in it. In fact, they're on top. To Stadler Arena, there you can see the standings. The United States leading going into the final round. They will advance along with the Soviet Union and Romania. This is the third and final rotation for this competition. Now, there are some interesting things that we felt you should know about gymnastics, not just men's, but women's gymnastics as well in the United States. For instance, to make an elite gymnast, it costs five to $10,000 a year just in travel and expenses. For an athlete to maintain its eligibility, the athlete must establish a trust fund. And for some other interesting facts, we've prepared this feature for you. In women's gymnastics, the 1984 Olympians have retired. Today, Christy Phillips is one of America's best gymnasts, as is 15-year-old Phoebe Mills. These two competitors represent America's best hopes for a medal at the 1988 Olympic Games in Seoul, Korea. Melissa Marlowe of Rocky Mountain Gymnastics is also a strong performer for the USA. And before the Olympic team trials in August, there will be some other new faces to watch. But while the gymnasts continually change, the coaches do not. Bella Caroli is now a stalwart in the USA's women's gymnastics program. But Bella is not the only great coach in America. Don Peters, Mark Lee, and Kevin Brown are among the best. And of course, one of the strongest programs in America is right here in Allentown. The Parquettes are coached by Bill and Donna Strauss a husband and wife team that has produced Olympians since 1976. Coaching today is more than the X's and O's of the apparatus. It is sophisticated fundraising to pay for equipment and travel and coaches' salaries. This is a sport of dedication, not wealth. And even though gymnastics is a very popular sport, local clubs need financial help. The cost to develop a gymnast is incredible. Bruce Steinbrenner came on, the, came on the Olympic scene because of uh, sort of a disappointment with the medal production at the Winter Games. And, and he's right. We don't need people coming, sneaking into a, sneaking into a facility at 6 o'clock in the morning to practice. We need those type of people in a facility. We need support from our government. We need support from our industry. Maybe if all industry in the country would pool their resources and, and we could drain the uh, money from, from that pool to subsidize the kids. Because one thing we're looking at in a facility like this and facilities throughout the country our greatest natural resources are you. We just had a unique situation a couple weeks ago. A corporation came to us and said, what can we do? And they gave a nice little donation because they had watched the Winter Games and they felt they had to do their share. They wanted to be a part. And they said they feel like if a park at Genesis is on the 88 Olympic team, they've had a part in it. And that was just the greatest feeling. We want 500 corporations to do that type of thing. So the money, although it's there, the millions, and it's it's getting filtered, but it isn't getting all the way to the bottom. Right, exactly. Uh, at the beginning level, the grassroots. We find that a lot of the corporate donations, they, they want the limelight, so if there's a big national, international competition, they will sponsor it, and the governing body gets those funds, which they need to keep operating. But the little guys, the private clubs who are producing the athletes, they also need financial aid to keep their doors open and to keep producing. So I would have to say, Peter and Kathy, that the moral of the story is corporate sponsorship has to start at the local level, like the local company that helped out here in Allentown at Parquet. That's got to happen to all of our amateur sports across the board, but we're talking about gymnastics now, and the money is not there. We are looking in this arena at over $100,000 worth of equipment. Now, we're not talking about insurance. We're not talking about coaches' salaries or the money to rent this arena. We're talking about just the hardware. This is an expensive sport. Yeah, it certainly is. It, I, I think that, uh, that money is starting to go to the right places. Uh, the U.S. Gymnastics Federation is 
aware of that. They're putting more money in the program, and, and that's what needs to happen. But it has to go down to the grassroots level. Uh, they made a very strong impact on me there with that statement that, that the money doesn't go down to the little kids. All right. Hopefully we've made a point in corporate America. I hope you're listening. We'll be back with the third round of the mixed pairs in a moment. In an gymnastics delight, we have our three pairs going into the finals, and these events are going to be packed with difficulty. You're in for an eye-opener. Romanians competing first on the balance beam, then the P-bars. And the Soviet Union will go second with floor exercise and parallel bars. And then the United States tandem of Phoebe Mills and Kevin Davis. Phoebe Mills also going on floor, Davis on pommel horse. Right now, let's get in order. The balance beam is our next event, and this is Gabriela Kotorak. Now, this is where Gabriela had some problems at the American Cup. She fell from the balance beam, but normally she is really tough here. Round off, lay out, step out, onto the beam. Little hesitation there. Tough pass, lay out, lay out, step out. Now she rallied from a bobbled start. I'm impressed. That balance break won't count much at all. One tenth. Pirouettes. Always a crowd favorite. Listen to this crowd. I mean, here we are in the USA, and they're cheering the Romanians. They're cheering good gymnastics. Now, I like that pass. A little unusual. She did a shoulder roll right into a back extension roll. Check one, two. Solid footwork. Back handspring. Only break so far is the mount, and as I said, and I forgot very minor. <laughs> and the judges might just forget it as well. Here's a dismount, very difficult. Round off back, handspring, double back. One step, again a minor deduction. Gabriela Poserov, 15 years of age. This is my favorite pass, back handspring. Layout, step out, immediate layout, step out. It's a very risky dismount she does. Round off, back handspring to two feet, right into a double bat. A fine performance and a tough event to pick for your last one, the balance beam, because anything can happen there. Her partner, Marios Toba, competing on the parallel bars. Now, Toba is uh, the three events that he picked for this competition are the three events in which he scored the highest at the American Cup. So he's, he's doing it smart right now. This is going to be probably his best event, parallel bars. In the past, it hasn't been a super exciting event, but in the last few years, boys, it really become exciting. There's flare work circles, a plange. There's another Healy twirl. Healy twirl. Right into a front straddle one the quarter. Beautiful trick. That takes a lot of power. There's a Stutz. Double back. One step. It's going to be a deduction. That was a very solid parallel bar routine. separates first from third place exiting the second round so anything could happen in this third round and the Romanians certainly have put the pressure on a beautiful balance beam routine and now this parallel bar routine. now here's the Healy twirl he catches his hand early enough to go right into that front straddle one and a quarter that's very very tough now he dismounts with a double tuck probably the most standard dismount on parallel bars but he takes a step that's that's a mandatory deduction but the routine as a whole is very very good he scored a 9.85 in this at the American Cup. Speaking of scores, Gabriela Potorak received a 9.8 for her balance sheet performance. Now we are waiting for the parallel bar score. And he too received a 9.80. 
19.6 will be added to their total of 39.025. 58.625 is the total for this team. That is now the score to beat. 58.625, that's a combined score for this rotation. That puts the pressure on the Soviet Union and the USA. And let's now talk about the Soviet Union. Svetlana Bayatova is on the floor. Full twisting double back. Good landing. This routine is just delightful. The crowd immediately responds. Now the most spectacular part of her floor routine comes in the middle pass. You can't even call it one pass, it's actually two passes combined. Just round off back handspring, one and a half twist step out to a double twist punch front step out tumble back the other direction to a layout punch one and a quarter that's like an olympic swimmer holding his breath for uh, two legs of the pool i would hate to have to train that routine what a combination it would be hard it would be hard to have energy after that but as you'll see she definitely has some she usually finishes with a triple twist. We'll see what she does. And a beautiful triple twist. Landed with her legs a little staggered, but... Oh, a gorgeous wow. routine. And the hands are clapping, and she smiled and waved to the crowd. Svetlana Bayutova. Now look at this middle pass. One and a half twist step out. Through to a double twist. Punches right into a front somersault, step out. Layout somersault, punch one and a quarter somersault. And it looks so easy. Yes. And here's her final pass. It's very difficult to end with a triple twist and done so well. As I said, she landed with her feet a little staggered. Igor Korovchinsky, her partner about to compete on the parallel bars. First score for Florex very quickly is 9.9. .9. This is also a great event for Korovchinsky. Here he goes. Giant. Stutz. Real clean body line. It's a hilly twirl. Back Stutz to another hilly twirl. Very, very fluid. Korovchinsky is very, very solid on parallel bars. Diamidov, one and a quarter. Straddle up. Ooh, almost put his legs up there in the bar. That would have been a deduction. Beautiful double back. Nice landing. Nice pop off the bar. If it's better than 9.525, they're the leaders. What do you think? Oh, definitely better than 9.525. It would be a very, very high score. And here's a trick called a Healy Twirl. Right into a back stitch into another Healy throw. Hot pirouette right to a handstand. Now here's the dismount. A double back flip gets a nice pop off the bar. First goes to Diamidov, one and a quarter. This is where his legs got stuck a little bit on the bar. I don't think they're really going to take much off at all. The double back is very, very high. Opens up and lands just perfectly. If their combined total is better than 19.425, they will be the new leaders, really putting the pressure on Phoebe Mills and Kevin Davis. And this is exactly how you want this meet to go. You want everybody to hit in the final round, and they're doing that. His 9-9, nine, 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 the score that he just oh. received, puts them in the lead. 59.0 is their total, and the pressure's on the USA. We will break away, and when we come back, Phoebe Mills and Kevin Davis will take the floor. Final round and the final female competitor. This is Phoebe Mills competing on floor exercise. Recognize the music? <laughs> it's been a while. The Adams, the Adams family. family. I was going to say the Munsters. <laughs> we asked right her now. how she selected this music. Her family and she selected it. Full twisting, double back in pike position. It's just perfect. She and her partner need 9-9. Nine, nine. So they're both capable of it. They both have to hit. Middle tumbling pass. One and a half to step out to a double twist. I was telling Peter earlier that pass is really hard to keep on the floor. It's a long pass. Back 
your hands free. She did a double twist here at the American Cup. Double twist. Good landing with room to spare. It's a very conservative ending for her. There's really no reason for her to take the chance in the double back here. Crowd loves it. Bella loves it. Young lady from Northfield, Illinois, left home to join Carolis in Houston, Texas. A former speed skating champion while them here in Allentown, Pennsylvania. We'll take a look at her first pass. Full twist on the first somersault, pikes the second one. Very well done. And here's her combination pass. One and a half twist step out. Right through to a double twist. Done very well. Kevin Davis on the pommel horse. Phoebe Mills received a 9.9. .9. Pressure's on. He needs a 9.85 or better. And this is the tough event for male gymnasts, except it's a good event for Kevin. He's doing very, very well. Looking across the horse. Beautiful flare work. Listen to the crowd. They're behind this him. This is it. He is on. Boy, this is real pressure. Most, most male gymnasts wouldn't pick pommel horse at the end, but Kevin loves this event, and he's great at it. Here it's he goes. Good. I think this will do it. <laughs> and he's psyched. <laughs> what an exciting ending to this mixed pairs. And what a smile on his face. <laughs> Bella Carolla's even clapping his hands. And here comes Bella now. I think he's going to act like Kevin coach again. congratulated by <laughs> Bella Carolla as he headed over towards Stevie Mills. You'll see him enter the picture. There's Bella. <laughs> and the crowd's chanting USA. The United States has defeated the Soviet Union to take the gold medal in the mixed pair. So it's USA, USSR, Romania, 1-2-3 in the mixed pairs of 1988. And it was an exciting finish right to the wire. The USA knew they had to perform, and by gosh, they did. This was fun, Leander. If this had been the final scene of a movie, you couldn't have hoped for a better script. All three pairs had to come up with their best gym gymnastics just to try and win. And Phoebe Mills and Kevin Davis needing a 9.85 and a 9.9. They both came out with 9.9s. It was so exciting. Great moment for USA Gymnastics. So let's hear about some of that excitement. Peter Vidmar is with our winners. Well, I'm here with the champions, Phoebe, going into that last routine. After seeing the Soviet's performance, did you know what you had to do in order to win? Well, I knew there was a lot of pressure on me, and I knew that she had stuck it. But whether she had or not, I wanted to go out and do a good job, and that's what I did, and I had fun. You sure did. Kevin that last routine you landed your dismount did you know that you had enough to win right there i thought i did it was probably the best horse routine i've put out this year so i was really happy with it and i thought it might give it the, the lead well that's great both guys both phoebe kevin you're doing great we wish you the best in 1988 as you go on your training for the olympics back to you leandra thank you peter vidmar olympic trials coming up in august and of course the olympic games during the last two weeks of september in seoul korea i think we'll be well represented Con Thank you, Peter Vidmar. Thank you, Kathy Johnson. The Mixed Pairs has been brought to you by McDonald's. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. Phoebe Mills, Kevin Davis, the winners of the 1988 McDonald's International Mixed Pairs. Heading now to Seoul, Korea. I'm sure they'll make the USA team.